whereabouts in Australia are you from? Melbourne. Melbourne. So you weren't affected by the flooding, were you? <laughs> Is that why you've sat so high up? I, I'm here with uh, my family. Uh, we're traveling in Australia. Uh, this is too high. Uh, and it's, it's a jail. <laughs> it's a jail. You all, you're prisoners. And you don't like to talk about it. You're sensitive about it. You want to forget the past and move on into the future like every country that has a suspect past. <laughs> you know, it's a totally inhospitable place. You shouldn't be here. It, the sun, you live about three quarters of a mile from it. And um, <laughs> I have seen insects walking around with knee pads. Uh, the, 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 you fling yourselves into the sea when you're not actually walking around audibly crackling in the heat. And, uh, and the sea is full of jellyfish and sharks and other things who hate you. But you persist in living here. So. <clears throat> We flew here, you know, and with the children and everything who were pressing the buttons and not sleeping and actually getting energy from the hatred they inspire in you on the plane. And, um... <laughs> but so you all really come from, from Irish prisoners, and, and that was because the English sent you here a long, long time ago. And um, the English were very good at that, you know, at, at founding colonies and so on. A lot of it was because of the voice the English voice. Irish people you never see starting a colony, you know, willingly, because Irish people wouldn't turn up. They would say, we'll go over there, it's got loads of stuff, are you coming? I will, yeah, I've just got to meet my brother for a quick drink. And uh, do it. I have to pick up some knitting and things. I'll be there. No. But the English were very good at it because they have that voice, you know, where they can go anywhere in the world. They go to Africa, say, and they say, what's your name? Hello, hello, what's your, um, Fubu, hello, how are you? Hello, hello. Uh, listen, um, Fubu, Fubi, I've got some beads here in my pocket. Would you like to see them? Would you, would you like, would you just listen? Clicky clacky sound they make, aren't they pretty? You keep those, you have those, you enjoy those, walk away, they're yours. I'll just have from where you're standing to the horizon. Thank you very much. <laughs> they were all very good at that. But anyway, so it's a, you know, it's a jail you live in. It's lovely, you've done wonderful things with it. <laughs> but you are all still in denial. The only real reason I came, I don't want to see Uruloo or Wurruloo or <laughs> any of your other garden face exhibits. Uh, the only real reason I came here is to kill a wiggle. <laughs>
gnat of pussy. There were two aboriginals sitting on it, bro. It was crazy. Like, bro. No bullshit. I traded her a dance for some goon wine. <laughs> I, once, I once had sex with an Australian girl. She said mid coitus, whilst fucking. <laughs> she said, Have you slimed yet? <laughs> Have you slimed yet? <laughs> I thought it was all fucking Ghostbusters. Box jellyfish, crocodiles, snakes, blue ring octopus, red black spiders, funnel web spiders, great white sharks. Just some of the reasons that put me off going to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Every creature is bigger and angrier than anywhere else on the world. <laughs> I put it down to two things. One, it could either be because spiders and snakes and the like normally hide under rocks. The earth is one big rock. Australia's at the bottom of the big rock and they're trying to hide under it. Well, you are it? a maniac! It's You're... just thinking about it, thinking about where spiders go and that, and that works, doesn't it? No! Why doesn't that work like Because there's rock? no real upside down and bottom of the earth, is it? It's all relative to what? It's relative to what? A map that you well, saw. Well, it's a coincidence, isn't it? <laughs> right, OK, read on. Well, I spent three years of my life in Australia. In actual fact, I didn't spend three years, I spent 18 months. But 18 months in Australia is like three years anywhere else. <laughs> And they're very, the Australians are very proud of the country. I left London on Friday at 4.30 in the afternoon. I flew all through Friday, all through Saturday, all through Sunday, and I arrived after 36 hours on an aeroplane. I arrived and see my eyes are hanging up. And the fellow says, how did you find Australia? <laughs> and I said, I got off the bloody plane and it was there. <laughs> The Australians, actually, I, I know the Irish have a funny way of talking, but the Australians have also a funny... They add I-E onto a lot of words. I was there around Christmas, and I said to a fellow, I said, what are you going to do on Christmas? He said, well, I think I'll get up. Chrissy die. <laughs> I'll have my bracky. <laughs> I'll pick up the cozy, go for a dippy. Watch a game of footy, have a game of drinkies, and then I'll come home and have a yummy, yummy Chrissy Dindin. <laughs> he was 64 years of age. <laughs> they love the, they love the, in Australia, they love the booze. But the beer is so cold. It's like you have to have gloves to pick up the glass. <laughs> Three beers and your lip is like me. <laughs> Everything's got to be cold. And you get a tramp, a wino, goes into a chemist shop and said, uh, do, you have a, do you have a bottle of metal-lighted spirits? And the chemist said, yes, gives him one. He said, what's the matter? Don't you have a cold one? <laughs> <laughs> they drink. They drink. I, I arrived there and somebody said, would you like a schooner? I thought he was going to give me a boat. <laughs> always telling me, they always, as soon as you arrive in Australia, they say, watch out for the sharks. And they don't say a shark will eat you or chew you up. They say he'll take you. <laughs> You're going to be taken by a shark. <laughs> and I think to myself, well, if he takes me, he'll die of alcoholic poisoning. <laughs> and I'm swimming. But in the back of my mind, sharks. I'm thinking of it. And I'm swimming away, and the fellow goes underneath me, swims on, I don't even see him, and he comes right under, and he goes, with his finger, whoo, down my stomach. <laughs> Nobody swam in that sea for about three days. <laughs> it is the nearest thing I have ever done to in my life. I was across the water, on the beach. I was, when I was out there, I, I hired in the, down on the coast a bungalow, kind of shack, hut, which we used to go for weekends. And we all used to get down there and have a few beers and swim and eat, laugh, joke. 
And then one of these Australian friends of mine said, uh, Hey, Dave, uh, <laughs> you want to be uh, careful about the grass around here. Uh, it's getting very tall, and a lot of snakes, they live in the grass. You want to cut it. And I said, well, I'm never here. I only come here every six weeks or something. How the hell am I going? He said, well, buy yourself a sheep. <laughs> Tether him, and he laid up all the grass. So I thought that was a very good idea. I bought a sheep for five quid. Tied him up. Six months later, he's as big as a house. <laughs> Wool everywhere. <laughs> Somebody said, you want to get him sheared? He'll dehydrate. <laughs> So I go back to Sydney and I go through the yellow pages, sheep shearing. And unknown to me, I am ringing up the biggest sheep shearing company in the world. <laughs> and I said, I'm making inquiries about sheep shearing. The woman said, uh, one second, please. And I was, I believe you're making inquiries about sheep shearing. I said, yes. He said, well, let me tell you our rates first. We sheep... Uh, we shear sheep uh, per 5,000, 10,000, 50,000, 100,000. We've got different rates. We've got piece rate. We, uh, we do hourly rate, weekly rate, monthly rate. Fell to sleep and take the swarm and stage up on the air, mate. Water for a piece for me on my way. And they'll form the sea, so all the markets for a fish or size. Yeah, self song. Mel Scarra, Graham, Thumb Scarra. Break the trend, but they cops and ammo not scarra. And I play bras off. This shit up. Raw fans. High snooping at the kill and tell. Yo, listen up. Let me tell you a tale about the voices of the unheard beyond the veil. In a world so divided where the poor are denied. Their rights and their dignity swept aside The streets are alive with silent cries Of the marginalized, living in lies Systems rigged, stacked against the weak But we rise up, our voices we speak Voices of the unheard, we shout it loud Injustice and oppression, we won't allow From the streets to the halls of power We demand change every minute, every hour it's a fight for the oppressed, the marginalized crew From the ghettos to the refugee queue No more silence, no more fear We march together, our message clear From racial divides to gender walls We break them down, watch them fall Equality ain't just a dream, it's a must In the struggle for justice, in whom we trust Voices of the unheard, we shout it loud Injustice and oppression, we won't allow From the streets to the halls of power We demand change every minute, every hour, every hour Politicians talk, but actions speak Promises broken, leaving hearts to bleed With the change we seek, the revolution seed In unity, solidarity, we take the lead No more divided we stand as one in the battle for justice until it's won. So raise your voice, let it be heard in the chorus of change. Let your words be stirred. Be stirred. Voices of the unheard, we shout it loud. Injustice and oppression, we won't allow. From the streets to the halls of power, we demand change every minute, every hour, every hour. Voices of the unheard, we shout it loud. Injustice and oppression, we won't allow. From the streets to the halls of power, we demand change every minute, every It all depends on the number of sheep that you have, percentage loss, percentage gain. <laughs> How many sheep do you have? I said, one. <laughs> I said, really? What's his bloody name? <laughs> Mind you, I'll tell you something, I'll tell you, and I mean this very sincerely, the Australians are perhaps one of the most hospitable and generous people in the world. I mean, they, if you're stuck for a night, they'll give you a bed. If you haven't got a drink, they'll give you a drink. If you've got no money, they'll give you money. The food, they'll take the food off the plate and give it to you. It's those white Australians I don't like. 